Hello to everyone interested in my laminar jet construction. I decided to make this video due to numerous requests that I got about what components are inside the jet and uh, the basic principle of operation. So I'm going to go over the parts of the jet real quick um, here as assembled. You can see the uh, sol solenoid right here that runs the cutter mechanism. Uh, this bar uh, is operated by the solenoid and transfers the torque through this shaft down to the actual cutting bar which is inside here. You can see them move in unison. And then this bar right here is a spring detent. It's, uh, there's a magnet here that attracts the end of this rod and so it basically detents in the off position so that when it's cutting uh, the vibrations from the water and um, it, it helps it snap into place and it keeps it in place uh, due to the um, turbulence of the water hitting the cutter mechanism. So you can see my little off, off jet connector here. It's uh, three Anderson connectors. There's two, two solenoids here, an open and a close. Uh, the 12, they operate at 12 volts, about 2 amps, and um, it just basically pulls it open and pulls it closed. I've, I've designed some, uh, a little foam uh, screener on the outside here to keep it, uh, the water from splashing. The jet would operate like this, and uh, when it's being, when the stream is being cut, the water would return to the pool out this opening here. Uh, you can see a couple of guards in here, which will I'll show up close later on, uh, that just keep the water from splashing out around this area and keep it off of the bearings for this shaft. Notice the tangential water input. Uh, this is. Jet is constructed out of basically just a PVC, uh, six inch PVC cap, a six inch PVC coupling, uh, several pieces of six inch PVC pipe that define the segments inside, and a uh, Lexan plate for the top plate and a Lexan plate for the uh, outer housing that holds the cutter mechanism. So let's take it apart and I'll show you the inside. Okay, we've got the jet apart now. You can see the pieces here. There's not that many parts to it. Uh, this is the empty canister jet housing. You can see the tangential water input here. It's going to come into the side. It's going to cause a swirling motion inside. And uh, as you can see, this first piece of foam here uh, accommodates that. It's kind of shaped like a mushroom because this is a cavity that's going to allow that water to come in and swirl and equalize pressure and just get equally, evenly distributed before the water comes up through this first layer of foam. So this pedestal here is just to hold the foam in place. So after that foam goes in, uh, a piece of just regular window screen, it's like you buy at Home Depot, this is aluminum window screen, you can cut it with a pair of scissors. And um, these pieces of screen are just to hold the sections in the jet separate and keep everything physically separated. So doesn't move around and all the sections stay put. For this, after this screen, we got a little separator ring. These are just pieces of six inch PVC pipe. Now, you might know that uh, fittings, PVC fittings are tapered so that they fit tight. I did have to um, bore this fitting out so that the, the pipe segments fit in very nicely. And uh, I, uh, bored, I, I bored that on a lathe and I um, drill this input on a on a mill, uh, all of which can be done by hand tools in your shop as well. Uh, so this is about a half inch separator ring. This just keeps the uh, keeps that foam section separated from the flow straightener. And this flow straightener is exactly what it looks like. It's just a piece of six inch pipe, three inches long, and it's got little um, little drinking straws about three sixteenths diameter uh, packed in there tightly. And uh, yeah, it takes a long time to cut these straws. The best way that I found to do it is just to uh, pack straws in about a one inch PVC pipe or steel piece of pipe, a little template pipe, and you can just cut them with a, uh, a regular like painter's razor, a little razor knife. And uh, just keep packing them in until you fill this up completely. And uh, the, this is where the screen comes in. Um, it's the most crucial part is to keep these uh, straws packed in there. And so the screens will go on both sides of this and it will go in on top of the foam. And then 
there's a about a one inch and a quarter separator ring that goes on top of that provide a little bit of a uh, buffer between the top of the flow straightener and the output plate. Now this output plate I, I milled it uh, to fit the coupling and it's also got the bearing holes for the cutter mechanism and some other mounting holes and things and slots but none of that's needed if you're just making a jet. There's some uh, little guards here and a little, uh, a little piece of clear pipe glued here. All of that has to do with the splashing from the cutter mechanism. So again, none of this is needed if you're not making a cutter on your jet. And um, all that's just a result of trial and error on, on getting um, this, the, the splash back from when it's being cut to not touch the stream because once the cutter moves away, you want an instantaneous laminar stream to come out of there that's uninterrupted and so you want a clean edge on that so it's all of these uh, pieces here are just to, to aid in keeping that stream clean right up until it hits that cutter blade and that way when the cutter blade moves out of the way you have the, the pretty end of the stream that um, will come out of the jet and it's just a lot of trial and error uh, is all that all that was to get all those guards and everything right. You can also see a little guard here on the cutter mechanism uh, that keeps splash back uh, from hitting the bearings and the shaft. Don't underestimate the corrosive power of water with pool chemicals in it. Use as much plastic uh, and aluminum as possible even though the aluminum will oxidize. Uh, zinc plated bolts don't stand up very good. They will corrode and rust. Stainless and plastic uh, is the best thing to use, if, if that's at all possible. You can see the little foam guard here that goes on top of the, uh, slips over the top of this uh, top plate, and then the other top plate housing would go on uh, to hold the uh, shaft for the cutter mechanism. That's pretty much it. I'll go through the components one by one on the table up close so you can see uh, each component in detail.